Welcome to Witham Sounding Board, a podcast sharing powerful business tips, insights, and trends for those seeking to become a rock star in their industry. Hi, I'm Stephanie Moreska, Team Leader of Physician and Dental Practices at Witham. Today, we are speaking with Dominic Segala, the leader of our healthcare advisory practice, and we'll be discussing provider relief funds and the importance of these dollars for the healthcare community and corresponding compliance and reporting that comes with it. Dominic, can you give us an overview and history of the provider relief funds and how they can be used? Yeah, so thanks, Stephanie, for giving me the opportunity to talk about this. So provider relief funds came about back, seems so long ago now, but in March of 2020, when the pandemic really had kicked in and the CARES Act came about, uh, there's about $175 billion of provider relief funds. And to date, about $164 million has been distributed, $164 billion, that is, has been distributed to all types of providers in healthcare from single docs all the way up to large academic medical centers. Um, and the importance of that is there is still $11 billion out there. So we can talk about that a little bit later also. So two big things have recently occurred, the phase four distribution and the period two reporting compliance. Can you expand on this for us? Sure, and what I should have stated too was, you know, really the, the provider relief funds were put out there as a, a true cash flow band-aid to all of the providers who are either were shut down because of the partial shut governmental shutdown for each state of elective procedures and or the significant impact it just had on their ability to, from a volume standpoint, from a cash flow standpoint. So it really came in handy. Um, but back to your question, Steph. So phase four was something that came out in December of 21. Um, applicants applied for it based on their quarterly losses for the last two quarters of 2020 and the first quarter of 2021. And the goal for this phase four was really to get money out to the smaller providers and those who were still showing operating losses. So back, I believe it was December 16th, about $7 billion was released for the phase four. And part of this phase four was also monies being distributed for the rural applicants. About $2 billion was sent out for the rural applicants. And then just recently, in about two weeks ago, end of January, there was another $2 billion that was released for phase four. So all in all, there's been $9 billion released in phase four, $2 billion for the AARP or what they call the rural payment. And there still is approximately another nine to 10 million. And that reconciles back to the 11 billion that we talked about. Again, I got it confused. Nine to 10 billion that's still out there potentially for more distribution. And there's been a lot of lobbying efforts from the American Hospital Association, the physician groups, to try to get these other funds out there. So that's the importance of the phase four and the dollars that just came out. The reporting period two that you asked about. So each one of these tranches of money have a corresponding use period and reporting period. So this reporting period two that we're now in, which is defined as the sec first quarter of 2022, any provider who received any type of provider relief funds with dates of July 1st to December 31st of 2020, that was the period, the data receipt, if you received funds during that, those two quarters, Q3 and Q4 of 2020, you had until the end of 21 to use those funds. And now in Q1 of 22, you have to report on those funds. And what that means is you have until March 31st to go into the HHS Provider Relief Fund portal and fill out the requested information to assure you're in compliance with the use of these funds. Because as everyone recalls, when they received these funds, they had to sign an attestation form, part of that was the compliance of the use of these funds and the reporting of these funds. So that's a really long-winded way, Steph, of answering your question of period, um, reporting period two and phase four for the provider relief funds. Great. Um, as far as phase four goes, um, have there been any important changes in the phase four money, how it can be used versus previous tranches? Yeah, so that's a, that's a great question. So in, in previous tranches, 
really the, what you hear is there's two ways to utilize these funds. Again, the goal is to not have to send this money back to the federal government. And the two ways are either incurring incremental expenses you incurred because of the pandemic. So different from PPP, PPP was salaries and rent and utilities. Those are not incremental. So incremental expenses because of the pandemic would be any type of expense you incurred, such as additional cleaning supplies, such as if you had to expand or telehealth costs or cleaning because you had to have a cleaning service come in. So, and they, the, the definition is any dollars used to respond, prevent or prepare for the pandemic. So step one is any expenses that you can document to you that were used for the pandemic goes against these provider relief funds. And step two is something called lost revenue. Lost revenue very simply is you take your quarters of 20 or 21 and you compare them against that same quarter of 2019. If you had a drop in cash receipts, if your cash basis or revenue, if you're an accrual basis, that delta is defined as lost revenue. So let's just say I received $100,000 in provider relief money. I had $30,000 of documented costs that I incurred because of the pandemic. And I had another $90,000 of lost revenue as we just previously defined. That 90 plus 30, 120,000 exceeds the $100,000 you received. And you now are in compliance and you don't have to send any money back. So that's sort of how it works, but phase four even expanded the definition of expenses. So it was pretty cut and dry before. Like I said, it was to prepare for, respond to, or prevent the pandemic. They have now really given a broader definition of any type of capacity issues. And in very general terms, so what they're trying to do is allow providers to become to use these dollars in a more expansive way. So for hospitals, it could be, you know, back up and discharges because they couldn't discharge the patient. Or for providers, it could be now, you know, marketing to get out there and to draw in more patients and to let them know that now they can provide services. So it's, you know, this capacity issue is very broad in definition, which I think is going to be very helpful and beneficial to the providers when they start to gather these expenses. Okay. Um, do you have any advice you can give us on the reporting aspect now that you've um, helped so many of your clients? Yeah, absolutely. And the one thing we tell everyone is treat this as an audit. So anyone who received greater than $10,000 needs to go through and fill out the, um, go to the portal and fill out all the information that's requested. Clearly the lower dollar amount doesn't have as high of a probability of being audited. But what we say to everybody, either those who received a million dollars or those who received 20,000, make sure you have documentation and files to support everything you put in the portal. The portal, all it requests is the data. It doesn't ask for supporting documentation. So make sure you have a file, make sure you have a drive on your computer that has you know, copies of the invoices if you're using expenses or your how you came up with your quarterly revenue calculations. That's really critical. The other thing that we tell all of our clients is when you go through the portal, there's some standard questions. The two main areas, like I talked about, are the expenses and the lost revenue. But they do ask for a lot of what I, what, what I will call gathering of information for the government. So they're going to ask you for headcounts. They're going to ask you for statistics on your volume. They're going to ask you to break down your cash receipts by payer. What we've received clarification from HHS on is that is not as relevant. So for the smaller providers who can't tell you, you know, how much was Medicare and how much was Blue Cross in a month, or they can't tell you their exact headcount, or they don't have the system in, in place to tell you what their volume or their visits or encounters were for a certain quarter, just make sure you're consistent. So do your best effort to try to get that information and be consistent on a go forward basis. But those categories that I just spoke about, it will not have any impact 
on your provider relief funds because that again is driven by your incremental expenses and your loss of revenue. And one more thing to that stuff is anyone who received greater than $750,000 will have to receive either a program specific audit or it'd be part of their A133 audit. And when the auditors, such as when we with them, would go in to audit this, the two areas that will be audited are the incremental expenses and the lost revenue. So that is why we have told our clients the statistical piece, the FTE count is not as important, but just make sure you're consistent. But we don't want clients spending days and weeks trying to you know, gather this data when it just isn't as relevant in terms of either the reporting of it or if you have to go forward with a uh, type of program specific audit. So those are really the keys. And what I would recommend is reach out to your advisors. Um, there's some great FAQs, frequently asked questions on the HHS website. If you just Google provider relief funds, HHS, there's some really good clarifications out there and you know, register for the portal. You can go in and look around. The great thing about the portal is you can start off and do an hour one day and hit save, everything saved, you come back in and you work through it again. And what we've been doing, Steph, with most of our clients, we tell them the data they need, and then we get on Teams, they share their screen, and we assist them and walk them through because we've done it so many times. So it makes it more of an efficient process. So for those of you listening to this, that would what I would recommend, reach out to your advisors. If your advisors aren't assisting with that, you can absolutely come to us and we can help you walk through this process and make it pretty painless. So I think Steph, that's what we've learned over the past year. Um, you know, we have this period two reporting coming up and now with the phase four money that just came out, that reporting period isn't until 2023. But the reason I say that is, you know, get familiar with it because we will have to do at least another round of the reporting for these funds that came in. Right, good to know. And it was nice, uh, the time saving aspect there on some of that reporting is really great information. Thanks, Dominic. Absolutely. And uh, appreciate you having me on and talking a little bit more about the provider relief funds and hopefully this 11 or so billion that's still sitting out there at some point will be released to the providers. Because to be honest, it's it's not only, you know, the Omicron and everything we went through, but now they're facing the labor inflation and the high cost of all of the labor out there. So it could come into use. So more to come on that, but uh, thank you for the opportunity. Great. Thanks, Dominic. Okay, take care. You too. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you'll be first in line to hear what's coming next. Don't want to wait for our next episode? Check us out at witham.com. That's W-I-T-H-U-M.com.